Welcome. Welcome to Weekend Wake Up. Happy Friday. I'm your host, Mayor Dan Seraki, along with our engineer, Mark, who puts all this together for you. And we also have our producer, Barb, who's going to be answering the questions or taking your questions. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, be sure to post them on the Facebook post, and I will come back at the end of the episode to answer every single one of them. I've got some Oldsmar reminders before we get started. Sunset Sounds tonight. It's the concert series. 7 p.m. at Ari Olds Park. Bring your blankets, your chairs, friends, your family, your dog to watch a free concert with Doyle's Revenge. Food trucks on site so that you can eat dinner and watch some live music today at Ari Olds Park. Tampa Bay Brewing Company. Badass Beer Fest is Saturday, benefiting the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber, the 5th, Saturday the 5th at 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. This year, it's the 8th annual. They're moving it from Tampa Bay Brewing Company over to 100 State Street West, which is right next to City Hall. It has become one of the premier beer festivals in Florida. Over 70 hand-picked breweries, 70 breweries right here in Oldsmar, pouring over 100 unique variety beers, plus great food, music, local craft, lifestyle vendors. General admission at 1 o'clock is $69.85. The VIP tickets are all sold out. This includes limited edition BABF tasting glass and unlimited samples of over 120 beers from the 60 breweries. There's also a designated driver ticket, which is $18.78. Tickets include entry into the festival with unlimited soft drinks and water. All attendees at this event must be 21 years and older. Don't forget, November 11th, 11 a.m., Veterans Day Ceremony at Veterans Park. Recognize those who served our country and roll call of the newly inscribed names on the memorial ward memorial wall during this free annual event. Yesterday I had lunch with Senator Ed Hooper. He and his wife Lee will be there. You don't want to miss this. This is going to be a special day in the city of Oldsmar. Second Friday, the same day, November 11th, 6 to 9 p.m., right next door to City Hall. Power up the golf carts, grab the kids. And check out this monthly event featuring food vendors, the antique car show, and more. Don't forget the talent show, Saturday, November 12th at 7 p.m. on Ariel's Park, a fun night of local talent where the residents come out, dance, sing, live on the stage for the community to enjoy. And I heard Barb might even show up, right, Barb? I might show up. <laughs> well, Barb, we hope to see you sing and dance for us. Well, with keep going. Today, I am honored to introduce our special guest, our fire chief, Oldsmar Fire Rescue, Jason Swabby. Good morning, good morning, Chief. I'm so glad you could join us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What's What's better than we can wake up with the mayor? So. Happy to be here. What Friday. about we can wake up with the chief, <laughs> the fire chief? So glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're gonna. I've got some questions for you. There's a lot going on in the city with uh, f with fire prevention and safety and Santa sure. Claus coming to town. Yeah. So let's start out with this weekend. We got daylight savings time. All smoke detectors should be tested once a month. Is that true or false? Yes, sir. It's always a good idea to make sure your your smoke detectors are working. So hit that little test button once a month, and then you know uh, they're going to work when you need them. All right. When changing the clocks back an hour this weekend, which is so enjoyable, we get to sleep yes. an extra hour. What else should viewers do as well? So you know, again, it's a good reminder: test your smoke detector. We don't want to forget about those carbon monoxide detectors either. Um, if either run off of um, anything other than a 10-year battery, then you want to go ahead and change those out when we uh, change the clocks. So there are such things as a 10-year detector yeah. that has a battery that lasts 10 years? Yes, sir. So there's, uh, with newer technology, obviously, there's uh, better, better batteries out there. So you can buy a 10-year smoke detector that uh, has an in-case battery that 
you don't have to change out every six months. Interesting. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to some <clears throat> false fire alarms. We talked about this Tuesday night at City Council. So my question for you is, on average, how many fire alarm incidents does the fire rescue respond to each year? Yeah, so we, we respond to generally about 120, 125 uh, fire alarms annually. Um, just to put that in perspective, that's, you know, ranks uh, about third on our list of call types. So majority of what we run is uh, medical calls. We see about 1,300 of those, about 165 vehicle crashes a year. And then fire alarms are right there at about 120, 125. And then, you know, a multitude of other types of calls below that. So. It sounds like you're busy. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're on the move. <laughs> How many of these are confirmed false alarms? So the, the fire alarm calls we do get, about 95% of them are, are confirmed false alarms, and that could be for many different reasons. So the storms, bad thunderstorms that we get rolling through can uh, often cause them to malfunction or they just have some other system malfunction. Interesting, very interesting. How do the false alarms impact the fire rescue services of Oldsmar? So first, just, you know, I want to say that fire alarm systems are a very important uh, component of uh, life safety. And when they're installed in um, structures that are identified by the code to require them, you know, we we treat them um, as emergency calls. So we're, we're going to respond no matter what. But what they do impact is our availability to respond to other fire and EMS calls that are going on in the in the city. Uh, doesn't mean that services aren't coming. Uh, just means they may be coming from further away from one of our mutual aid uh, agencies. Got it. Yep. So Tuesday night, let's talk about the proposed amendment to the code of ordinances that the council approved. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, so the proposed amendment was to Chapter 30 of the City Code of Ordinances. Um, it has two components. One is a penalty for excessive uh, fire alarms. Um, again, just want to be clear, that's not meant to assess every fire alarm call we go on. Um, occasionally, we'll run into a, a situation where we're running 8 to 10 of those 125 to one specific uh, uh, business um, over the period of either a couple months, a couple weeks, or even days. So that's what it's, uh, the assessment would address, is just to encourage that business owner to uh, uh, meet the compliance and keep the system up working properly. Perfect. I like that idea. So there's going to be a timeline. It's going to come back to council once the city attorney drafts the amendment. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, as you know, you guys approved uh, the city attorney to draft that. Uh, once he uh, finishes the draft, we'll bring it back to council for consideration at two separate meetings. We're hoping to do that. Uh, the first reading of that on December 6th and then hopefully uh, finish it off with the second reading in January. Perfect. Start off the new year, new year right. What do you think? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. I think I, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> we got a lot of things going on. Safety holiday tips. All right. Can yes. you provide a few safety tips for this Thanksgiving? Tell us about the turkeys. Yeah. So obviously, uh, a lot of the the majority of the the turkey uh, fire safety tips you see on YouTube uh, revolve around those turkey fryers. So. You know, if you put a frozen turkey in uh, some very hot oil, it tends to uh, violently create a fire. So you want to make sure you're doing that in an open area. You're, you know, safe, making sure your turkey's thawed out Put when you're putting it in that fryer. And then, you know, just on the same cooking note, even cooking inside, you want to make sure you're being aware of what's going on on the stove and in the oven. You oftentimes have a lot of extra kids running around because you got family over, so... Want to keep those little hands out of the, the hot places. So, safety number one, right, Chief? Yes, sir. What other tips do you have for Christmas time for safety? So, a big one for Christmas time is uh, the live Christmas trees. You know, we all enjoy having the fresh scented Christmas tree in the house. They do dry out quickly, so you want to make sure you're watering them daily and keeping those heat sources away from them, you know, at least three feet. And then when you're done with the holiday season, make sure you're disposing of it properly. And, not uh, burning it in the backyard. So we want to see those uh, taken to a, a collection point. So do you have any problem with lights at all anymore? I know in the past there was a problem with 
Christmas lights. Any any problem with that at all? Or no? um, you know, again, if they're on a very dry tree, you know, you have a, a real tree and um, Christmas light, you know, an older set of Christmas lights malfunctions, it could spark a, a tree to, to start a fire. Yep. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Chimneys, any suggestions for its use? Yeah, so we don't get to use them very often down here in Florida. Um, a lot of times people are keeping that flue closed to, to keep out the, the animal. So you want to make sure that you open that up when you are using it. Um, use a fire screen in front of the fireplace. Keep those embers from floating into the house. Um, burn only when you're home. If you leave, you want to make sure the fire is completely out. Make sure those carbon monoxide detectors are working so it can alert you if uh, too much of the gases and smoke mm -hmm. are getting in the house. I do have a fireplace, and it's a gas fireplace, so I just flick a switch. And yeah, that's, those are the nice ones. Right? Yeah, Not a lot of work. No, <laughs> yeah, no smoke, no, no Not ash. Not chopping wood out in yeah, the backyard. Yeah. Piling the wood up in the backyard. <laughs> Let's talk about the holiday program. Santa is coming to town. He's coming. He is. And, and now is the time. Uh, Santa's visit program is now taking reservations. Is that correct? We are. We are taking reservations. It's a... Uh, very uh, popular program. Santa does visit us a little bit early here in Oldsmar. Uh, special request from the fire department, bring them around. Um, registration is open right now. It closes next Friday, November 11th. So make sure that you, you bring your three by five cards up to uh, the station. We've got some instructions there for you to fill them out. So they, yeah. they have to go to the station, get a card, fill it out and take it back to the station? No, it, you just fill it out right there. We've got a box you're dropping in and uh, yeah, we'll... There's nothing okay. online. It's, it's strictly a card. Yes, sir. All right. So first come, first serve, basically. Uh, not necessarily first come, first serve. We uh, collect all the cards and then do a random um, choosing of those cards to fill out the schedule. Wonderful. So, yeah. yeah, it's always a great event for uh, mm -hmm. the, the people, the citizens, the families, the children yeah, of Oldsmar. Of it's, a, it's a great event. I'm, yep. I'm so blessed to be involved. How are resident? Oh yeah, we just talked about that. Um, how long have you offered this program to the community? That was a question. Yeah, yeah. So a very long time. I, you know, just hit my twenty-first year this last June uh, with the department. We've um, offered the program all twenty-one of those years. Um, from what I understand, you know, talking with Chief McGuff, who was the chief at the time, um, it, we've offered it at least ten years prior to that. So, you know, a very long time. Uh, looking at it at least 30 years. So. Well, I first moved to Oldsmar. I lived across the street from the pier. I rented a house when I first moved here in 1995. And I remember I moved here in October. And that Christmas, I remember the fire truck pulling to the neighbors next door. Uh -huh. And remember Santa coming out of the fire truck. And I went, yeah. what? what's going yeah. <laughs> on? So, yeah, so it's been going on a long time. Yep. Other other programs your crew manages another program your crew manages toy for tots when does that start yeah so uh we're gonna see those boxes start appearing in the community next week um so you know we're getting ready to start that program off here soon good what are what are the ages and types of toys needed so they they accept toys from the zero to 14 years of age and um they uh, require that it be an unwrapped toy. So it can't be, uh, you know, a used toy. It needs to be something uh, new and wrapped. Okay. The question here is where can they donate? I, I remember at Eves there's always a box. City Hall there's a box. Where else? Yeah, so for the, the, um, the city here, we have collection boxes at the fire station, City Hall, the library, uh, State Street Center here next door. Um, as you mentioned, we there's some local businesses that will uh, – complete some drives, and then we go pick up the, the boxes. Um, I don't have a list of those, but yet you're right, like Eve's and Daddy's are usually uh, some mm -hmm. of those that, that offer it. And how long do they have to bring a donation? So Toys for Tots picks up uh, all the donations at the fire station on December 12th, so you need to get them in before that. For December 12th, yeah. there you go. Let's talk about that tree recycling. We brought it up a little bit. We don't want anybody to burn sure. them in their backyard. City provides a site to place to use Christmas trees. Usually, where is that? So, um, generally, it's at Ari Olds Parks. The Public Works uh, sets that up, so they'll have some signs directing you to the right location. Yeah, usually there's. It's right by Ari Olds Park. You 
throw your tree. There's a pile of them there. Yep. Remember to remove your decoration and lights. Like the chief just said, follow the signs. A selected location at Ariel's Park and dates of service are going to be Tuesday, December 27th through Friday, January 20th. That's for dropping off your trees at Ariel's Park. All right, Chief, what else we got? Anything else you want to bring up that we forgot anything? No, I actually there was one more one more part of that ordinance uh Oh, go ahead. Amendment I forgot to mention is uh some third party requirements for inspections and maintenance. Just um just to give a little background on that, there's through the Florida Fire Prevention Codes, there's annual inspections that are required for any fire alarm system, sprinkler system, hood cooking system, any kind of fire protection system. So um, what the amendment will provide is a, a requirement for the contractors that do that inspection to upload it to an electronic-based system that we adopt. So there that way go. we can keep track of it and make sure it's getting inspected annually. So the corporate restaurants, everyone is going to be responsible for making sure that they're in compliance. Yes, sir. Yep. I like it. it sounds <laughs> like we're getting organized. Yes. All right. Anything else? That's it. Well, I really do appreciate your time today. I'm so glad you're here. Are there any questions, Barb, from our fans out in the thousand fans we have watching right now? <laughs> Uh, we don't have any questions, but we have a shout out to the Oldsmar Little League, which is holding a hit-a-thon this Saturday, November 5th, starting at 5 p.m. You can watch the kids hit the ball out of the park, grab some popcorn at the concessions, and stay for a movie in the park on their projector screen. And that's nice. at the sports complex? I assume so. Okay, so it's at the sports complex, and what time is that? 5 o'clock on the 5th. Wonderful. Thank you for, but no questions. Okay. All right, we're good. Thank you, Fire fire Chief. Thank you for having me. Jason, I yes. loved having you here. You were great. <laughs> I think we're ready to be Santa. <laughs> no, we have a Santa, a very good Santa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, I do love those kids. Yes, I, I really a, do. I really enjoy it. It's a very amazing event. It's a lot of fun. Our, our guys enjoy doing it, too. So. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah. yeah, the gifts, yeah. the candy. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It really is. The parents' faces, the kids' faces. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you, Chief Suave, for being our guest today. And thanks to everyone for watching this morning. Get up, get out, and enjoy old tomorrow. See you this weekend. I'll be around all weekend. Rock and roll. Happy Friday. <laughs>